A lot of talk about the Prime Minister's new house, David Gazzard. Not that he's moving in there. He says he's going to stay in the current uh, lodge or lodgings for as long as possible. But what's your assessment, Gaz, on whether this hurts, harms the electoral prospects for the Labor Party? Well, I think the reaction of some of his colleagues who have been privately briefing probably <clears throat> tells you all you need to know about that. Um, I mean, it's certainly not a good look. Not, not when you've got families all over the country struggling with their mortgage repayments and you've got a Prime Minister casually and breezily dropping $4.3 on a on a coast home well outside what, what most people could expect in the middle of a housing crisis while there's a rental crisis and uh, while the government, it's, you know, won't rule out uh, ne cuts to negative gearing, which uh, the Prime Minister would have certainly used in his in his other dwellings and may use uh, with this dwelling. So, you know, is it out of step with where most Australians find themselves? Yes, it is. Is it the timing poor? A a absolutely. Um, I, I can't really see how someone would make the mistake of, of doing this at this point of the cycle. It sort of, you know, bewilders me as a, someone who's operated with, uh, with the objective of political management. Eamon Fitzpatrick, your thoughts on it? Will it matter when people go to the ballot box? How much is this an issue for the, the Labor Party electorally? Look, I think there's a couple of points here, Kieran, before we move on, right? I mean, one, life doesn't stop for anybody, including the Prime Minister. He's got a new life partner. You know, he needs to make a call with her on where they're going to ultimately build their life together one day. She's from the Central Coast. I mean, what relationship doesn't have or, or seek, you know, a 50-50 call on the way things are? But unfortunately, you know, that's a life call. It's not a political call. And we come back to the issue. So as Gaz says, you know, are there, you know, could there be the risk of perception issues? Look, you know, we can we can keep playing this game. It's not like he's Peter Dutton and just forgot to declare a $1 million Townsville home once, you know. I mean, you can go back and forth on this, but clearly there is a view that this is the cheap shot that has to be played because we are at that point in the electoral cycle. So you've got every sort of mid-ranking front bencher on the coalition side today, absent when they've been called to account for 10 years of terrible economic performance, but yet they're mysteriously appearing all over the media today with the old, you know, I wish them well, but line. I mean, so is this political? Absolutely it is. Is there a risk? The risk here is that governments continue to do many things all at once. It's the bandwidth of the audience and the message. And I think that's where everyone needs to sort of focus on and what is the next step from here. But let's not forget, you know, this is a life call. It's not a personal, you know, it was not a political call. And unfortunately, life just doesn't stop for some people. The, que the Queensland election is just around the corner uh, Saturday week and uh, it looks like it is going to be a thumping for the Labor Party. But uh, Stephen Miles is trying everything, including promising a plebiscite, David Gazard, on the issue of nuclear energy if he wins. Yeah, well, you're going to do anything you can at this stage as a leader. It's a tough thing to win another term for the Labor Party in, in Queensland. Queensland does tend to swing wilder than other states and the, the nature of those swings are more compressed. So you, you, you see much, much larger swings against an incumbent government. Um, you saw that with the election of Campbell Newman, then you saw it with the de-election of, of, of the Campbell Newman government. And, and I, I suspect if the polls are right, no matter what um, Stephen Miles attempts to do as Premier, uh, his goose is cooked. The second debate today, uh, they're going head to head very shortly. The final debate on Tuesday right here on Sky News, the, the uh, Sky News People's Forum, alongside the Courier Mail in Brisbane on Tuesday, and that is a, a pivotal moment in the final week of the campaign, Eamon. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. You know, there's all to play for. You know, I've known Stephen Miles for many, many years. He will not stop until the very, very end, and he does take nothing for granted. But as Gaz says, you know, longevity is an issue and swings are a huge feature. And they're tough campaigns. Queensland is a massive state and they are tough campaigns where you can be in the most inhospitable places mm. and yet expected to keep your cool and stay on focus. And things just happen all the time. I think the key here, though, is, you know, we've seen Chris Afouli, who's basically run a pretty good campaign, make that slip up over abortion. And that's an issue that's come to the forefront again today. We'll just have a look at South Australia. So there's no getting away 
from that for him. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit more focus on that. You know, but I think the other contest I'm really looking forward to, Kieran, if I'm honest, is uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk, the most, you know, one of the most successful Labour premiers versus Campbell Newman on mm. your Sky panel on the night. You know, that will be something to watch. Yes, make sure you join us on election night. It's a big week next week. We've got the leaders' debate, that uh, People's Forum on Tuesday evening, the election night, Saturday night, as uh, Eamon has done for our promo department. Beautifully this afternoon, Palaszczuk and Newman. It's going to be massive. Thanks, Eamon. Gaz, appreciate it. See you next week.